Hi, ciao okay. Alessandro. Ciao Silvia, I leave you the floor for yes. your conversation and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, I'm here again. You see me again. This is my last conversation today. And I would like to introduce you my next guest. I'm very happy to have here Saif Ulhaq. Hi, Saif. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi. Hello. Yeah, same here. I, I had the chance to get to know Saif a few weeks ago in light of this conversation. And I have to say that I'm very happy to have the chance with, uh, to know each other and to have this half an hour together. Saif was connected to our Polydesign Consortium and I have to thank uh, Paola Galdi, the Head of International Relations for Polydesign Consortium and Valentina Lucchese, which is the country manager of Perdezon for getting us in touch. So welcome here with us, Saif, and let me introduce you a little bit. Saif is the principal of DACA-based architectural practice, Saif Ulhaq Kapati, SHAs. I hope I have pronunciated it well. His uh, recent work, uh, Arcadia Education Project, is the recipient of Aga Khan Award for Architecture 2019. And so congratulations, really congratulations for your prize. Saif is also the director of a research and design program at the Bengal Institute for Architecture land and landscape and settlements in Dhaka, Bangladesh. So welcome here and I'm sure we will have a very interesting conversation. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. When we contacted you, to join in our 24-hour design conversation, you suggested as one keyword for our world book, which is uh, planet. I would like to ask you if you can introduce this word uh, to, to our audience. So which meaning are you giving to this word related to the COVID-19 lockdown period and why you chose this specific word? But let me start by thanking uh, the Milan Polytechnic School of Design for taking this initiative. This is a very unique thing, a marathon uh, program of uh, conversation um, covering all the time zones. This is this is very uh, interesting idea, and I, I'm, I'm sure that the, my word that I have chosen uh, for this conversation planet somehow fits with this whole idea that this conversation is happening all uh, around the uh, planet simultaneously at different time zones, but it is happening all over the uh, planet. The reason, uh, well, uh, I don't think that we need to explain uh, that much about the word planet. Uh, it's an English word which describes uh, a particular object uh, an object that is in the space that revolves around uh, one star or a luminous body and Earth is one planet and I thought that if I uh, choose a word that connects us all rather than looking at things from different uh, points of view or places of location if we can during this crisis period, if we can converge, get together, discuss this whole situation together, what would convey that spirit? I mean, okay, I'm from Bangladesh, you are from Italy, but we all belong to this same uh, planet, uh, same uh, uh, world. When we were we are born, we are born in this world. We do not know exactly whether it is going to be here or there. We, I mean, when you are in the womb of your mom, mother, you are not aware that when you are actually going to be born. So I, I think that uh, uh, it is important for us to look into the current situation as well as few other. Uh, issues that we have been facing recently 
which is of a planetary scale, not of uh, some local uh, issue or some specific issue. It concerns all of us, everyone uh, living on this planet and all living and non-living entities. That there is an actual the word. I hope that is satisfactory. True, true. You touched at a very interesting point as uh, we all share the same planet, but sometimes in the past uh, we forgot that we are sharing this planet and we have to respect it and somehow in our actions. I think that sometimes our actions went for the wrong. And so we are also, I'm also thinking about climate change and all these other problems that we are facing right now, not only the pandemia. And so sometimes we are we, we can consider ourselves a sort of responsible for that. I mean, we, we should be also responsible for a change in a positive direction and not only a negative one. Absolutely. Thank you for introducing this word, which is really a hot topic, I have to say. So in this explanation, as I said, you touched with so many interesting points, which I think that they are uh, starting to be the focus of an international debate that was born in consequence of the pandemic also, and that we are facing in this month. I know that as for now in Bangladesh, is still an emergency situation. And so we have to take care of the planet and of that. Relating to that, I would like to ask you something about the situation in Bangladesh. So what happened, what is happening during the COVID-19 pandemic and how this emergency affected your, your job as an architect, and, but also as a researcher and as a professor? So yes, uh, I think, uh, well, uh, the whole uh, knowledge of uh, COVID-19 uh, disease uh, had traveled to Bangladesh like all other places. And uh, I, but I think that initially we did not fathom of this uh, thing, of this virus uh, that was going to affect the entire planet. Uh, so it took us a while. Uh, I think it was on the 8th of March that the first two cases were uh, identified. So from 8th of March, uh, it gradually picked up. We must, we must uh, understand that the capability of a country like Bangladesh in testing, in identifying, in carrying out is, is quite limited to many other countries. I mean, uh, uh, we have had a very impressive uh, economic uh, development in the uh, more than 10 years now that Bangladesh has been uh, progressing very uh, rapidly on the economic front. But we have not been able to organize our governance, our administration, and a lot of things uh, keeping in pace with that uh, economic progress. So uh, I would say that we were uh, caught quite unprepared to face this kind of uh, uh, catastrophe. And uh, so uh, we were very, uh, we are very much hit hard and we are still trying to uh, have some control over the spread, but it is still uh, increasing. And I have to tell you that we are not being able to test as much as it is required uh, in terms of the population, because we have a, quite a large population. So unless we test a, a large number of people, we really would know exactly how uh, uh, this has spread. But we, uh, whatever tests have been done, whatever cases identified, whatever deaths have taken place, it clearly indicates that uh, uh, it is not a good situation uh, regarding the spread of the disease. Now, uh, we are not also sure that how soon we will be able to control uh, the spread 
and bring it within a manageable uh, limit uh, like many other countries, especially like if you uh, consider Europe, uh, uh, countries like Italy, France, Germany, Spain, they have been able to manage uh, uh, the spread and uh, things are much better uh, now, but here it is totally uh, uh, different. So we, we, we have to continue with this pandemic for some time more to come. Uh, I cannot exactly tell that how long it will be the Ministry of Health and government officials, they can uh, tell about it, but we have to. Uh, so uh, it has affected, uh, effect, uh, it has an effect on everyone. Nobody is spared uh, from this is one disease where uh, it is difficult to say that it is not going to affect the rich or it is not going to affect him or her. Uh, we are all uh, quite vulnerable uh, at catching this uh, disease. And, uh, but what I had mentioned earlier, uh, the economic progress uh, has been very spectacular, but still there is a large number of population that has to live and work on a daily basis. There's a lot of people who are working in the factories, who are working in the field, who are working in many other uh, situations. So it is very difficult for this uh, population to remain in a lockdown situation, remain at home, and then uh, because it will eventually lead them to starvation. I mean, so people are out of necessity of survival. I mean, people uh, are coming out and that is creating a little uh, difficult uh, situation. So the economically weaker section of the society is more hard hit uh, because they need to uh, uh, come. Out. And as for architects, I mean, uh, well, I mean, in a situation like this, in any uh, kind of crisis, for example, uh, whether it is an economic uh, recession or some terrorist attack, uh, which uh, creates a large amount of disruption and all these things, uh, construction sector uh, gets very uh, much affected. Uh, I think it's one of the first sectors to get affected. People uh, would stop uh, building anything unless it is very urgent. So here in Bangladesh also that uh, uh, whatever um, architectural work we were doing uh, came to a very much of a halt situation. And I have to tell you that we are not a very much automated uh, country. Uh, we still rely on human labor a lot. Our construction sites, our work sites, uh, everything has a lot of human uh, dependence, human involvement. So uh, uh, there are not much use of robots or artificial intelligence in this thing. So architects definitely are very much uh, hit. And uh, I think that there are some scope for architects to get involved in some emergency work, but that is not uh, to that extent that one is expected to uh, do in a normal uh, condition. So personally, my office, I have a very small practice and uh, I had uh, kept it close because I really don't want uh, uh, the people who work with me to have their life uh, jeopardized traveling to the office and going back uh, as it is not very uh, sure about the whole uh, safety condition. And the other thing uh, is that uh, even if we come to the office or uh, uh, we can, but if there is no uh, further uh, development of this work, I mean, uh, taking them to construction and other uh, situation, this work will not produce much. It will not be a very productive uh, effort. And the work at from home, the online uh, thing. I personally, I'm not very used to that. I, I, I prefer to work more with uh, hands. I'm, I'm more of a, a, a person 
still uh, sketches, draws. But I have people in the office who are doing, uh, and I can definitely read the drawing. And I, I believe in uh, that uh, thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm very much uh, restricted by the pandemic about uh, carrying out my work. Research, yes. What I can uh, do from home, I can, uh, uh, whatever is available in the net or something, I can continue. But I, I'm not able to do any field work. So that is uh, 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 the way I'm kind of uh, doing my work. Super. I mean, I'm sad to hear that the situation in Bangladesh is still an emergency. And I really wish to all your country that uh, you can find a solution soon to to turn the things for the good. I mean, it's very, I'm very, very sad for that. So sorry. And also, you are real right. We we weren't uh, prepared to to change our way to work, to shift everything online. Also, I mean, to change our way to do. You, you touched a very interesting point. The one that we were used to sketch. We were used to use paper also with the students. I felt this difficulty that, you know, doing it online in distance remotely without the human contact uh, is really, it's hard. It's hard from this side, but it's also hard from the side of the students and from the side of the practitioners, I have to say. So that, that's really a, a big change that we faced that we, we weren't prepared for. And now we have to try to somehow find a solution to, to confront ourselves with that. So in the beginning of, of the conversation, while you were explaining your keyword, the meaning of planet, uh, you chose, you, that you chose, uh, you were describing a future scenario of changes that, like this that are needed now to, to confront ourselves with this situation. And probably we, we understood from this pandemic that we need to rethink uh, design and design practice, but also the planning of our settlements to reduce, for example, the dependency on CO2 in order to reduce the, the emissions, so in order to respect the planet we are living in. And uh, also thinking about your works, uh, the, the kind of material that, and the constructive technology that you, you use in your work, uh, the use of a material that are locally available, uh, it's something connected to this to this topic, I think, of respect of the planet. So do, do you feel that architecture as a discipline, as a practice, have already started to discuss this change that we need this, and planning this change? Or how do you think that architecture and design should address these big changes that are now we are now experiencing in terms of planet? Yes. Uh... It is, it is uh, very difficult uh, to bring uh, change in a uh, kind of a wholesale manner overnight. Uh, it, it, I mean, unless you are really uh, taking very drastic uh, measures. These days we don't talk about regulations anymore. We believe in uh, gradual change all these things. So, uh, in, uh, I mean, if we are talking about architecture, I think we have shifted a lot from what the early modernism uh, that had originated uh, in Europe, uh, we have shifted a lot, where uh, primarily the social concerns were very much uh, there. I mean, uh, there were a lot of thinking about this society. And uh, with the uh, sort of uh, accumulation of wealth and other things, I think our focus was going more towards uh, of, uh, kind of enjoying life in a way without really looking into the effect, the way we consume things, the way our lifestyle is, is affecting our future. So we were kind of living for the day. Okay, let's have uh, this, let's have that, we'll talk about this and that. But there is definitely a tomorrow because 
when we bring in uh, children in the world, we don't bring them to uh, sort of uh, think that they're not going to be here tomorrow. I mean, definitely we'll all have to go one day, but we think that, okay, now we have them, they will grow up, they will do this and that. So we think about the future. Otherwise, we wouldn't have continued it. Uh, if we would have just ended our life, that this is our thing, uh, we just uh, don't need to do anything more. So if we are looking into the future, we really need to uh, see that our activities, the activities of human beings, how does it affect the future of this planet, future of our uh, cities, future of everything. Uh, so that's why uh, I think it, 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 it has been felt, but the global warming and the climate crisis had sort of uh, brought uh, the whole issue in a very big way. In, 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 it is a real thing. It is not that, okay, nobody is uh, I mean, talking about some fictitious things. It is, it is really, everyone is feeling it. I mean, there are evidences. It's not uh, that fiction. So, in order to prepare yourself to uh, tackle this change, and that this is very much connected with the way we live, we are talking about the use of fossil fuel. We, we, we are using fossil fuel uh, to drive uh, everything. We, we need electricity, we need uh, uh, petrol, or uh, so. But we are not looking into the, the, the emission of carbon dioxide. What is the effect of it? And why we are getting so many cyclones, why the sea level is rising, and all this uh, kind of thing. So, unless and we need to look at it in a very holistic manner, not that, okay, Bangladesh will get affected with their problem, they think about it, okay, we are going to be we are in a higher altitude, we are not going to be affected. But this is not leaving out anyone. Every other country is affected. I mean, uh, look at Europe, the uh, hot summers that are being experienced, which was quite unusual that the way uh, it has been happening. And in America, all this hurricane and all this place. So I think. It is very important for us to uh, uh, see that there is a paradigm shift happening in the way we are going to live in the future. It is not going to be the way we have been doing things. We have to change. We have to bring in a change. Now, especially the countries in the developed world have to make big adjustments, big changes. Uh, I would say big sacrifices. Because uh, if you look at the, the consumption and the carbon footprint, you'll find that uh, Bangladesh's carbon footprint, despite having so many people, is not that much compared to any other developed country, which has much less population, but the consumption is. So how do you balance that? So these are the things uh, this needs to be discussed. So, well, from our side, I mean, as an architect, I would say that we we. we need to act responsibly. We need to think about the effect of the work that is going to uh, happen on the environment. So environment gets a priority. So when I use materials which are not uh, far uh, uh, to fetch from, I don't have to bring it from a far away place just because I, I have this fascination for this uh, material. So if we can develop things like that, Unless one cannot do without some particular thing that needs to be brought from a very uh, remote location. So let us keep it like, let us do things. And I'm sure the, the appeal of architecture, the meaning of architecture does not get reduced because you are not being able to use one particular material. So whatever you have, you can produce fantastic things. That's how we have been doing uh, things. And we, we, we must also see how we are making these materials, what is the process involved, how much carbon is being emitted. So all this needs to be linked up. So I would say that we uh, have to uh, 
we have already started thinking. I mean, the, uh, it's not that uh, there, there's a lot of discussion happening, and uh, many of it is happening in Europe. And uh, but they need to be more connected, and people need to see examples. Because at the end of the day, it's not the architects who decide. These are uh, people. I mean, politicians need to be convinced that uh, we need to bring in changes the way we have to live. Uh, businesses, economy, everything needs uh, uh, to happen. So I think that uh, we, we will uh, need to continue our work. We will need to have a greater mobilization for this. So, yeah, is this okay? Yeah, yeah. True, you really, I think that as designers and architects, we should, again, start to raise the awareness, start to change behaviors and maybe the change will be noticed hopefully from the population and hopefully more than that from the governments this night we were i was talking with another guest about uh, maybe the, the idea that maybe we have to change not only our normality but what we considered fundamental before in terms of not only of habits but also in terms of behavior because we need to absolutely raise this consciousness in ourselves uh, that uh, we are responsible for that. That's and also this is starts from our work. I, I truly believe that you are you are totally right. And we have our last four minutes in our talk, and unfortunately, it's almost at the end. And I would like to ask you just you know one more last thing, that is a recommendation for the future. What would you recommend to designer and architects to restart their work? after this pandemic or when this pandemic will be over? Yes. Uh, well, uh, what I understand is that it is going to be a slow start. It's not that uh, tomorrow uh, the pandemic is over, we have a uh, vaccination and we are getting back to the way things we were uh, doing, I mean, like business as usual, I don't think that is going to happen that uh, easily. So uh, we, we need to uh, prepare for that, that it is going to be a slow start. And we need to also prepare ourselves a kind of an austere start. And we need to engage ourselves on the issues that came up during this uh, uh, pandemic. But how to address them together and architects can show, they can uh, not only have ideas, they can also illustrate them they can also talk about it, they can present it to the people at large, because unless we are communicating with the uh, 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 people, uh, we, we are not being able to mobilize their support, uh, it will be difficult to realize this thing. So we need to engage more, we need to uh, have uh, these ideas shared for this future living. So I think that uh, that is something the uh, architects can uh, start, I mean, having this slow start, I mean, without really jumping into uh, the kind of things that we were doing, because we, we know that uh, uh, they have uh, problems, there are issues uh, that needs to be looked into. So why not take this opportunity of rethinking a new future, rethinking of a new beginning where we can uh, cohabit in a sustainable manner with everything that lives and not lives on this planet. So I would say that this is what we can uh, do. Wow. <laughs> really, the idea of taking this pandemic as an advantage to rethink a new future is really a great message that uh, we leave to our audience. Unfortunately, our time has come to an end, Saif. 
I'm sorry, but we have to leave the floor to the next. I was very, very happy to be here with you and thank you for sharing your thoughts in our conversation. Really, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> to you. Yeah, bye-bye.